Welcome back guys to uh, Vampire. We are in uh, chapter 4, The Great Hunt. So let's uh, read the mail. Lady Ashbury wrote this to go to the West End. Oh, we gotta go to her mansion. She must. Oh, mansion? She probably lives like the rich. I'm now level 22, and, uh, and let's start feeding on some of these people because I've been building these uh, relationships with them. There's really not too much more to find out from them. Like this guy right Good evening, here. Mr. Elwood. Evening, Dr. Reed. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, he still has one more clue? Or a hint that I haven't figured out? Alright. Oh yeah, here he goes. Why do you feel responsible for the injury, Thomas? What really happened? I wasn't disfigured by any German shells. It happened during my leave. It was an accident. Why lie about it? Come on. It's one thing to come back disfigured by the Germans, and it's another to get injured in an accident that could have happened to anybody. Surgery could help you? Uh, what should we say? You know you can't hide forever. One day you'll have to face your loved ones. Until that day you have no chance of real recovery. My friends all died in the trenches. Shameful enough to be alive for these stupid scars. I don't want my children to see me like this. Thomas sees Thelma Howcraft as living proof that there is hope for him. Oh, that is the uh, the vampire lady. <laughs> he feels ashamed by his injury to see his family, and he feels responsible for his disfiguration during the war. Tell me what really happened. I went with her. Did you start the fire? Were you trying to avoid going back to the front? That's not uncommon, you know. No. It's just that I was asleep when the flames reached the room. The girl was long gone. Bitch never woke me up. Left me to burn. Wait, 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 what? I didn't get to catch the first part of it. Tell me what really happened then. I went with a whore in Rouen. <laughs> Dead drunk I was. The hotel was a shithole. Did you snow? Okay, so that's what happened. He uh, hired a a prostitute, and then the building caught on fire. Goodbye the hotel did. Now, well, yeah, that's that's all we can get from him. Good so evening, let's just uh, evening. Let's just mesmer this guy. Look, you can see the, uh, like, this little smoke, kind of like blood, is telling me to take him over here. I guess where nobody can see. is how it ends. Farewell my life, you betrayed me, God. I mean, he wasn't gonna go, I think eventually he would have gone back to his uh, family. But for right now, he was, he was like, he wanted the pain to end. We kind of helped him out. Let's talk to her. Good evening, Nurse Hawkins. Good evening, Dr. Reed. Alright, she is healthy. Pippa has felt useless as a nurse since the beginning of the epidemic. Oh yeah, she wanted to join the uh, the guard of Prewin, or whatever they're called, to make a bigger difference. Pippa saves beds for patients who can pay. Oh yeah, she and Milton have a little uh, side hustle going on. 
And Peepa and Milton Hooks are a couple. Yep. I wonder how he's going to take it when uh, she's not here anymore. <laughs> Peepa is thinking about quitting the Pembroke Hospital. Well, let's help her out. Let's mesmerize her. There's like ominous music the plane. We're gonna take her back where this uh where that other guy was. They're gonna be finding two bodies. Oh look his body's gone though. I'm sorry, Pippa. I knew I should have fled this rotten city with Milton since the first day of the contagion. We got a small key. That belonged to Pippa Hawkins, probably used to open a box or a chest. The district will soon suffer the consequences of your action. What I really want to find out is where can I open uh, this box? They play like this ominous music, this like a uh, church, church kind of music. When you embrace one of the uh, characters, I remember there was like a, a lockbox over here. Maybe this will open it. Right here. Was this it? It's locked. It's locked. So it's not that key. It's another key. Someone, I thought that was it. That's why I came up here. All right, let's embrace and look. I'm, I got four thousand experience from these people, from those two, the combined total. Who else can we embrace? We gotta start knocking these people out. Because look, I I heal them, I cure them. I think she had fatigue before. Now she's got a headache. Good evening, Miss Hal. I need blood, doctor. Warm, rich, vibrant blood. So I thought initially, if I healed them. With a checkup. Do you require my services, Miss Halcroft? My condition cannot be understood by you, mortal. This curse is beyond your science. I thought they wouldn't uh, get sick anymore, but apparently she was, uh, like I said, she had fatigue earlier. Well, until the day science finally admits failure, please accept this little contribution. Thank you, Doctor. Your efforts are admirable, though laughable. Now she is recovering. Uh... Oh, we can just drain her right now. Thelma is suspected by pre-wing pre agents to be a real vampire. Thelma has witnessed a vampire kill a prey. I think that's what like started her trauma. Oh, in her social circle with uh, Thomas Elwood, the first guy we embraced. And it's cool if you want to see like the recap of the story, you can just do this. You get a pretty much a, a background of them. And she's affected by Quartet Syndrome and believes she's a vampire. Is that even a thin Quartet? Quartet? I never heard of it. Maybe I need to read more. <laughs> Alright, let's embrace her. Even though she's recovering though, I mean her her uh her experience bar filled up all the way, but could I get more if I let her fully recover? Let's let, let's uh I'm gonna release her. So right now I can only get two thousand from her. Let's uh, check later on. Let me embrace one more. There was a carpenter who uh, was this guy Harvey Fid Fid Fid. Fid yep, that's his name. Good evening, Mr. Fid. Good evening, Dr. Reed. Any news about my operation? Yeah, you're about to go into the operation room. Harvey will not be able to feed his family as long as his arm is injured. Harvey is blaming himself for his injury, and Harvey's wife died during the war. 
That's why he's uh he doesn't really give much experience, but um Hey, I'll take it. That's why the mesmer level on him is only is only one. He doesn't know what's going on. I guess his kids are about to be orphans, but he's in the hospital now. Someone's taking care of them. All I wanted was to go back to work, to take care of my children. And apparently you kind of have to embrace them because that's one of the ways you get all the weapons in the game. I think, like, because they drop items sometimes, like keys or the weapon itself. It's locked. Let's see this guy. I think. Good he's... evening, Doctor Reed. Such a pleasure to see you again. Please show me what you have to. Say. Of course. It's just trinkets and curios, really. But I'm sure they can be useful. I'm sure too. Opium. I mean, this is nothing that I can't buy myself. Or find. So, uh, other than that... Good evening, Doctor. I think, um... There's nothing else to find out about this guy. He doesn't even have any... Relationships. Rakesh is not afraid of death since he served as a medic. Rakesh steals from the dead. He is responsible for. Yeah, he's he's robbing them, and uh, he's been appointed as a medic by mistake during the war. Oh, I need one more mesmer level. You got lucky. Goodbye, Mr. Chidana. Goodbye, and I'll see you later. All right, let's go to. West End. Let's go see Lady Ashburn's. Uh, I was thinking, can I go in here? All right. What's the quickest way to get there? I guess this way. Let's follow this. Wait, what's going on here? Is that figure again? You must prepare. For the earth is bleeding, and the harvest is upon us. Stay away! Whoever you are! This is no time for petty quarrels, my champion. Can you not hear? The famished queen has awoken. The famished queen? I am not your champion! But of course you are, son. As surely as you are the blood of my blood. I had to kill Mary! I have known your pain, child. Do not succumb to it. Silence! I dismiss you now! The land calls for a champion. All and everyone needs you. Silence! Be gone, fiend. Wait, is that his I'm dad? I'm tired of all these puppet shows. Because he said the blood of my blood, but then again, he could also just mean because he was your creator. What does this say? They all, they're all the same. Oh, this is actually talking about a curfew. This has to be the nice part of town, right? Hey, I thought we were friends now. I visit your hideout. <laughs> Who was there? That looked like a vampire. They want war. I'll show them war. Whatever this poor woman did, nobody deserves this kind of punishment. All right, how do I get there? 
was saying I can just go there. Cut through here. Could I? Yeah. I've never been in this part of town. Give me your blood! Whoa, the vampires are actually fighting with uh He's a blood icon. What some of this? I'll send you. This is pretty cool just watching them fight. Hey, what's wrong with this guy? What the heck? I was just watching. But you want some of this? How do you like that? Oh, he killed him. One shot and he's dead? Wow, I'm so strong now. These vampires though, these Ekons, they're pretty quick. I was just watching the fight and then they attacked me. It's locked alright. Sometimes you gotta unlock these doors though, so it kinda gives you a quicker access when you're uh, traversing to through the town. Alright, let's go see Lady Ashburn. This, so is, her... this is where she lives. What a splendid house. Yeah, we're in the upper class area now. This is in Whitechapel. Was that or the docks? I didn't even know Lady Ashbury goes home. She's normally at the hospital. But why are her own uh, kind attacking me? Like I'm a vampire just like them. But we're about to find out. I kind of want to um, go upgrade my, my skills because I am... I got like 5,000 experience points now. Dr. Reed, welcome. How are you? As good as one can be, considering the circumstances. Yes. Death and affliction seem prevailing themes of late. Please, come in. We have much to discuss. I hope I haven't disturbed you. Not at all. Actually, I was counting on you visiting me tonight. How strange, this painting. Beautiful, melancholic, yet with a haunting dignity. Indeed. A long time ago, a friend asked me to paint this for him, but I kept it in the end. I did not know you were a painter, my lady. There are many things you do not know about me, young Ekon. Please, call me Jonathan. Please excuse my behavior, Jonathan. I tend to tease my friends when uneasy. What is bothering you, my lady? Your letter was quite alarming. We will talk about this in a few minutes. For now, I would like you to tell me about yourself. How have you been since we last met, my friend? Mary was the murderous vampire. My sister Mary. She was made a vampire in the same way I was. She was the one killing all those people everywhere I went. Vengeance is a powerful force for those betrayed. Made vampire through careless error. Victims by surprise. In the end, she implored me to put an end to her misery. But still, I felt I had taken her life twice. I am so sorry for my accidental cruelty. Had I known your dear Mary was still alive, I would never have sent you to pray for her soul in that church. There is no need to apologize, my lady. Your words have been most helpful in these difficult times. Thank you, my friend. 
If only we could have guided your poor sister through her terrible nightmare. I swear I did not intend that. If only I had known then how vampires are created. That is the scientist speaking. In truth, most of us do not know how it really works. Personally, I make sure my prey will not return to haunt me. What do you mean? I am merciless, Jonathan. I only feed on the dying, and I make sure they are dead before leaving their remains. Oh, so Mary was still kind of alive after we uh, bit her in the beginning of the game. Maybe that's how she turned into a uh, vampire. I came to the conclusion that my maker, whoever he might be, must be a powerful vampire. Certainly extremely old. How have you reached this conclusion? I felt this power radiating like an aura every time he appeared. Most ancestral vampires of England were killed by the guard of Prewen half a century ago. I wonder who your maker could be. You have no idea who he could be? Some of the ancient ones fled England. Some may still be in hiding. All I know is you, my friend are a pawn in some secret and obscure game of chess. <laughs> and what, am I the pawn? He is the only immortal I've seen appear in an ethereal form. His voice, his words seemed ancient. It was disturbing. I am afraid you are right. The simple fact that your blood made Mary such a strong Ekon proves that you must be of ancient lineage. Who we are? That's our, maybe he's our like ancestor. I think I should ask the questions, your ladyship. After all, it was you who invited me to settle this most urgent of matters. Fair enough, Jonathan. The situation is critical. We do not have the luxury for etiquette. Please do not misunderstand me. I would be delighted to discuss mundane matters and idle trivialities. If we survive the dark nights to come, we shall have all the time in the world to speak, you and I. For now, please follow me, Jonathan. She's always like so... I must so... say, your house is exquisite. One of the advantages of living forever is having the time to be selective with one's furnishings. She's like secretive. I took the liberty of having tea served. You can still drink tea. Can't keep it down, but I do so enjoy the aroma. Let us toast to make believe. And of course, to your health, Jonathan. And to yours, my lady. So they fake drink it. <laughs> or they do drink it and then she just maybe throws it up. Please, call me Elizabeth. So, my lady, why truly did you invite me here? I've been asked to deliver an official invitation to meet the Ascalon Club. Who are they? Really? They are the embodiment of vampire law in Britain. Some say they influence the destiny of the Empire. Some believe they merely protect it. How many are they? Only a small number of Powerful and deceitful immortals, all of them entangled in a sticky web of shadow cabinets, influencing trade. Sounds like politics. Will they fight the guard of Prewen? I doubt it. Fergal was Lord Redgrave's executioner forever and a day. By defeating that beast, you deprived them of a powerful weapon. Really? Fergal wasn't even that tough. Why use you to contact? Because they know we are close. The Ascalon Club has many spies. Their main occupation is gathering information and then deciding how to use it. So they got spies everywhere. Why not ask for your help? Since you are obviously a powerful and influential immortal yourself. You have to understand that I am invisible to the eyes of Ascalon. For I am a woman. That suits me well. As long as they leave me alone. Oh, so they won't even consider her? They're still in their uh, backwards ways of thinking. Have they threatened you in any way? Not at all. Their message surprised me at first. But it is only logical, considering the critical situation in London. 
Should I trust them? Of course not. Do not misunderstand me. They can be very useful, but I believe their long-term goals differ from yours. Why meet them then? Because nothing truly important can be achieved in this city without their consent. They could be powerful allies in this current situation. So she's basically saying use them the way they're probably going to use us. Should I lie to them? We all lie, Jonathan. It falls to you to choose your behavior. The most important rule is to show them due respect. Gotcha. They have done nothing but impede my investigation since I became known to them. Why would they want to see me now? I guess they now see you as Ascalon material. They must have found out what happened to your sister. Proof of the potent blood flowing through your veins. I'm not sure I can accept their invitation. I have seen their handiwork. How Fergal the Beast imposed the club's law. You have no choice, Jonathan. Even I would not openly defy Lord Redgrave, the chairman of the Ascalon Club. What can you tell me about Lord Redgrave? Who is he? Lord Redgrave is the founder and chairman of the Ascalon Club. Most mortals know him as the Earl of Bristol. He is rich and extremely influential. Have you met him? Only on rare occasions, for he never goes outside the club. And women are not awarded membership, even immortals. Oh, that's messed up. How old is he? How long has he been a vampire? Lord Redgrave claims to be the progeny of William Marshall, the most valiant knight who ever lived. If that is true, he could be very old. That must mean he's strong too. How powerful is his reach? The Ascalon Club may be the most influential secret society in England. Not all its members are immortals, but they are all very powerful. Oh, so you don't have to be a vampire? They are not all immortals. How is that? The club is mainly comprised of political figures who seek the safety and expansion of the Empire. The most loyal are awarded immortality. So it's like an inner circle, and you get in, eventually they can make you a vampire. Any familiar or famous names? As the richest, most relentless British tycoon, Aloysius Dawson is considered ideal Ascalon material, and has been watched for years. Because of his wealth? If you are convinced I must meet him, I will heed your advice. Thank you, Jonathan. I understand your reluctance to brush shoulders with London's vampire elite. But we have no choice. Is the situation that critical? Yes. The Guard of Prewen has called for a second great hunt of our kind. And they will stop at nothing to eliminate us. Will the Guard of Prewen and the Ascalon Club fight each other? I doubt it. If Prewen really launched a great hunt, I think most of the Ekons I know would flee the country to escape the bloodbath. Wait, the guard is that strong? I think I saw them kill an Ekon on the way to your house. They seem to have a list with names. To launch another great hunt, they must have collected intelligence on vampire identities and whereabouts. They are a resourceful lot. I mean, they got spies everywhere too, so... Should we fight back? I will not be hunted down like an animal again. I admire your courage, Jonathan. But the best way to fight them is to put an end to the epidemic. This is the only way to clear the air. I feel like we're in between two a war. We're like the middle ground people. What is a great hunt? The first great hunt was launched about 75 years ago. In just a few nights, the guard of Prewen located and destroyed most of the old British vampires. Why start a second one? Prewen has always seen us immortals as a threat to mankind. My guess is they suspect one or more of us is the cause of the epidemic. How did you survive the first hunt? I fled, Jonathan. Like most vampires who survived that slaughter. And I secretly came back 
when I was sure they had lost my trail. <laughs> they should have all done that. You should flee then. Leave London, the country even. I have seen the guard in action. They are merciless. Your concern warms my heart, Jonathan. But fear not. If the situation gets too dangerous, I shall retreat to my secret Scottish manor. I could hide you in my luggage, if you wish. Thank you for the offer. I shall keep it in mind, but I have much to do here. There is a question I must ask you. Could Lord Redgrave be my maker? I doubt it. If Lord Redgrave had made you his progeny, he would not have seemed so surprised when you demonstrated the strength of your lineage. That's true. And how am I going to fit in her luggage unless I can like morph into a bat or something? <laughs> what is the plan? The plan is we both try to save this city, you and I. Go to Ascalon, accept their proposition, and use their influence to promote your agenda. Wait, she can't go there, she just said though. How can I save London? The epidemic is the priority. You must find its origin and put an end to it. This is the best way to solve the crisis. What will you do? I still have contacts and old friends in this town. I shall make some inquiries and attempt to learn more of the situation. We need clarity. Will I ever discover the identity of my maker? Maybe not, Jonathan. We know for sure you were made by a powerful vampire, but most of those fled England long ago. Please forgive my bluntness, but I have to ask. Was it you? Wait, we've asked her that a couple of times Did you already. Make me. Oh, Jonathan. I know you shall always have a gnawing doubt about who made you an immortal. But I swear, I had nothing to do with it. Yeah, this is like the third time in the game we've asked her. We've asked her at the hospital and we've asked her a couple of times. You have no idea at all? You seem to know so many things about the secrets of the vampire underworld. Even if I had my suspicions, I would not dare give you a name so soon. All I can say is this. I will make inquiries and keep you informed. Alright, sounds good to me. One day soon, I will have to find the answer to this mystery. And I shall help you in your research, I promise. For now, you must go to the Ascalon Club and play their game. Will I see you again at the Pembroke Hospital? No. You will find me here if you need me. I shall conduct inquiries alone, and we can then share our discoveries. Will you not visit Pembroke again? No. I must remain discreet and avoid attracting attention to Pembroke Hospital for the time being. But how will you sustain yourself? I shall not, Jonathan. Fear not. I'm used to it. When will we meet again? As soon as you meet Lord Redgrave, I suppose. Fear not, my dear. I shall only be a heart's beat away. Alright, so I guess we won't find her in the hospital anymore. We're gonna have to come to her, uh, mansion. I want to thank you for all your support and your help, my lady. Could you do me a last great favor and call me Elizabeth? I should be honored, my lady. Then it is settled. Finally, some good news in these dark hours. Thank you. I appreciate the advice. I had best prepare myself to meet this Lord Redgrave now. How thrilling to meet the Earl of Bristol in the flesh, so to speak. Something tells me you're not very keen on the man. Don't get me wrong. The gentlemen of the Ascalon Club are honorable, but their attitude and opinions are somewhat antiquated. <laughs> I see. As long as they deny access to female applicants, I will leave them to their antediluvian considerations as to the natural order of things. Antediluvian? Jonathan, That's a good word. Promise me you'll be careful. Of course. But why the fear in your voice? Look at me, Jonathan. I am. I mean, really look at me, young Ekon. Her heart's beating. I thought vampires' hearts don't beat. I think we may be deceptive by nature, but this heart of mine has always told the truth. Oh. 
Elizabeth. I think there's a romance brewing. Go, my friend. But come back to me soon. Yeah, they're gonna get together. I can already tell. <laughs> Alright, let's go meet this uh, Ascalon Club. Lord Red, Red, whatever. But if he's that powerful, why doesn't he ever leave his club? I, I guess he doesn't need to, right? He has probably everything he could ever want. And then he delegates all his uh, bidding. Like he did, like he did to that um, beast, his enforcer, the executioner. And there seems like there's a war going on between uh, the guard and the vampires, and we're caught in the middle of it. But oh well, we're gonna find out the truth. I'm still curious as to who made him. So, time to visit the Ascalon Club. And gain their trust. Alright, where's this uh, club at? The streets are kind of empty here too. You would think uh, this Ascalon Club would be, uh, keep their area quarantine like they would keep the area free of any intruders right so I would assume that it's gonna be empty leading up to them I cannot enter a new hideout is available where's this hideout at wait that would have been a straight shot to them too so how can I get there from the north docks New dialogue available. I didn't even know. I never had that before. Let's go back and talk to her. Then again, I'm playing it on PS4, so I don't know. And then the game does crash a couple times. I've only had it happen like twice, so hopefully I didn't jinx myself though by saying that. I bet you she's got like a bunch of information here too, like documents. Sick of the East End. This is on 1913. So her mom was an immortal, and she was still human at the time. I thought she was a vampire when she was getting jumped in the street. <laughs> to be part of this world means you're ready to face it. That That's pretty true. I guess she was teaching her to be strong and independent. I 
I like how, so I like all the backstory you can figure out about the characters in this game. Oh, this is Charlotte Ashbury. That was her sister. He's still hoping to become a vampire. Alright. Is her sister even alive? This house is huge. I mean, of course it is. It's a mansion. Dracula? It's locked, all right. Oh, this chest right here. Nothing over here. Uh, can I? Nope. pleasure of your visit. Sorry to disturb you again, but could you spare me a few minutes? Of course, my dear. Always a pleasure to speak with you. Do you know if the epidemic has affected many people in the West End? I confess I've been more concerned by events in the East End. The wealthy have more efficient ways of dealing with infection. But this is no common epidemic. That is true. I must tell my daughter to stay at home for a few days. But the girl is Stubborn and fiercely independent. Much like her mother. Oh, so that was uh, Lady Ashbury's daughter who we were reading the, uh, the diary about. Concerning your investigation. Yes. Are you truly seeking to identify my maker? I cannot promise you anything, but yes. I am conducting some research of my own. Do you think we shall ever see better days? Or at least better nights? I know not, Jonathan. I have seen some horrid days in my long lifetime. Experience has taught me that one cannot outrun the fates. When all of this is over, the war and the epidemic, we could leave the city for a while. Travel around Europe, you and I. Traveling is always so complicated for us poor creatures of the night. But yes. I would be glad to travel the world with you, my dear. Can you imagine living forever like this, though? Will you tell me your story one day, Lady Ashbury? One of them, perhaps. I have had so many lives, Jonathan. Eternity may not be enough to relate them all. How many lives has she had? Or lifetimes? Goodbye, Elizabeth. The Blood Knight Tragedy. Oh, this is on the Great Hunt, how she was one of the last ones alive. I guess they took down her maker. Something called the Tear of Angels was something that was going to cure their thirst. Oh, this is by Lord Redgrave, the founder. And she paints. Alright, let's get out of here. I guess that's all we can find out from her. What is that? A rogue Volcard. That looks like what that beast was. Yeah, hit him. You two fight. Is 
Is he dead? He lasted for a while. I hear more fighting. How dare you interfere with my You want some too though? How do you like that? Oh, that's a good attack. I guess he had the blood barrier on because I was just wailing him and he wasn't dying. Alright. Let's check the map. If I go... I could go that way. Because this, this area right here was locked. But I thought the vampires belong, well not all of them belong to the Ascalon Club, because they're fighting amongst themselves. Alright, you guys just fight. I'm out of here. This looks like it could be a dead end too. Maybe not. If the game loads. All right, the door has been unlocked. Oh, I've been through here. This is Whitechapel. I don't want to go here. See, normally that door was locked. Now it's open. I can just travel in between the two towns. Look at the guard doing their patrols. Look at it, vicious beast. <laughs> I wasn't trying to kill you guys. Oh, they won't leave me alone. That's pretty good. Yeah, you can't stop me. You better run. Oh, is there something here? Alright, which is the way? Don't mind me, guys. Wait, there's a blood trail here. Is it locked? Probably. Wait, this looks like it's the way, though, right here. See? Was the vampire I saw earlier. This war takes no prisoners. I guess I can't go that way because the guard is there. But 
but this way seems the west end never have i felt so sad to be back home i used to live here Let's sneak up on him. Back at the West End. The Ascalon Club. The heart of British vampire society. Women's right Not to quite as subtle as I Is this it right here or that? Well, what is this woman trying to do? Good evening, miss. Oh my god, no. Please, Mr. Vampire, don't kill me. Please, no. I'm too young to die. I still have so much to offer this world. Wait, no. Why do you think I would... What? Don't worry, Dr. Reed. I know you wouldn't harm me. Mother told me you were in this part of town and might drop by. Your mother? My name is Charlotte, sir. Charlotte Ashbury. My mother taught me long ago how to recognize the signs that betray a vampire. I understand she also taught you how to tease and gently mock innocent young Ekons. It's a pleasure to meet you, Miss Charlotte. She's healthy though, too. What do you think about this part of town? I was raised here and I suppose it feels like home. You grew up in this part of town too, did you not? Yes, I was born a few streets away. A small world, is it not? Did you ever imagine that my mother was your neighbor all that time? That you could have met her in a dark alley at night? You won't trick me twice, young lady. We both know Lady Ashbury never hunts or attacks prey at random. Come on, Doctor. Don't tell me you never thought about that possibility. Her fangs on your neck. Oh, are you blushing, Dr. Reed? <laughs> I thought vampires can't blush. Is there something that's bothering you? Too much selfishness and individualism for my taste. Even when there was no epidemic. Even if that's partly true, may I remind you that many charitable institutions are financed by the selfish and filthy rich. I suppose you're right. But society must reform and renew itself or we are all done for. She's ahead of her time. What are you doing out here? You mean, what do I do outside at night, since I am a woman? Let me ask you a question, sir. Would you ask the same question of a man? Actually, yes. I ask the same question to everyone who dares to go outside at night, considering the risks. Well, if you must know, I campaign for the right to vote for all women. Why should I wait to the age of 30 years when men can vote at 21? Well, was that really a thin back then? Are you a suffragette, then? Oh, you really are, Elizabeth's girl. Without a doubt. All adult women have the right to vote in the US, in New Zealand, and in Australia. But women here can't vote unless they are property owners. No need to convince me, Miss Charlotte. I have shared your opinion for a long time. Even before I met Emmeline Pankhurst. Really? Oh. Now I see why my mother appreciates you so much. Too bad there aren't more men like you in the vicinity. How are the locals reacting to your claims? People here can't wait for a wall to be built to isolate the West End from the rest of town. That's how progressive they are. If this happens, Emily and I will blow it up. Explosives are very dangerous, young lady. And who is this Emily? She is my best friend, and a suffragette too. She was supposed to campaign with me tonight, but hasn't turned up. Have you any reason to be worried about her? Recently, Emily started to believe in... Well, she got interested in vampires. I'm afraid she might be in trouble. Let me guess. 
You spoke to her about us, didn't you? Despite your mother's warning, I think I should try to find your friend. Oh, that would be top-notch. I can tell you where she might have gone. You have my thanks, Dr. Reed. And please, don't tell my mother. All right, we won't. Tell me about your adoption. What do you want to know? Who are your real parents? Elizabeth Ashbury is my real mother. She raised me and has taken care of me all my life. I have no idea who my progenitors are or were. Do you live with her? I still spend a lot of time in my mother's mansion, but I have my own house now. I have a life to live, you see? And one day, I'll have my death to face. Oh, but she's still hoping to be a vampire, though. How did you meet Lady Ashbury? First, I was an orphan in the institution for girls she manages in the West End. When I was ten, she adopted me, and I have lived with her ever since. Did you know she was a vampire when she picked you? The correct... She was in an orphanage before being adopted by the lady herself. I wonder how, uh... <laughs> she'll take it if I, like, bite her. Lady Ashbury, how is she gonna take it? Or maybe she won't know it was me. Word is Econ, Doctor. And no, I had no idea why my mother only showed up at night. She told me everything when I turned 16. Though I suspected the truth for a long time before that. What exactly has your mother told you about me? Your name and profession, obviously. And the mystery about your maker. I'm sorry to hear about what happened to your sister, sir. Mother says it was not your fault. Does it not scare you to know what I am? What your mother is? Why should it? My mother is the most compassionate woman. Must I be wary of her, Dr. Reed? Or you? Of course not. You have nothing to fear from me or your mother. Good to know. And don't worry, my mother told me everything I need to know about vampire tricks, their nature as well as features. Your mother is not like any other vampire I've met. I believe she thinks the same about you, Dr. Reed. Well, maybe I should have told her maybe, right? Because it's their nature. You never know. Your mother has refused to turn you into a vampire. Tell me more about it. Each time we argue, Mother expresses the same fear. She wants me to remain alive and full of joy, rather than become melancholy and immortal. She claims you can't have one without the other. It's pure selfishness. Uh-oh, what happened? I guess it froze. Alright, we're back. I guess the game did freeze. <laughs> That's what I was talking about too earlier. Your mother has refused to turn you into a vampire. Tell me more about it. Each time we argue, Mother expresses the same fear. She wants me to remain alive and full of joy, rather than become melancholy and immortal. She claims you can't have one without the other. It's pure selfishness. Well, she's right about that. Your mother has walked this earth for much longer than you or I. She is wise, and we should not ignore her advice when we disagree with it. But why shouldn't I be allowed to forge my own experience? There can't be only one righteous way to deal with eternity. It's your mother's choice. As daughters and sons, we have to accept the decisions our parents make for us despite our own wishes. I love my mother and have accepted everything from her. Even that she named me Charlotte when it was not my original name. Does it bother you? No. Whoever I was when I was born, I am now Charlotte Ashbury. It hurts as much as it makes me proud to know that's the name my mother will read on my tombstone. What was her original name? Do you know why Lady Ashbury chose you to become her daughter? No, I don't. Each time I ask her that question, she smiles and says it's precisely because I dare to ask such questions. Do you ever regret that she chose you? Of course not. Though I often wonder if she adopted others before me. If so, where are they buried? How was it for them to pass through life with a never-aging mother? Oh, that's true, because she has lived many a lifetimes. 
Why do you still hope to become a vampire in spite of your mother's refusal? It's the immortal aspect of vampires that interests me. The world won't improve unless women take charge. I'm convinced of that. You're obviously a clever woman with a good education and a brilliant future. But have you thought about the price you'd have to pay? The loneliness? The necessary masquerade? Is it not true of every high position? To change this world and make it a better place, one needs time on one's side. That is true. Tell me, Charlotte, how do you plan to achieve eternal life, since you've obviously given it a lot of thought? I won't give up. You have no idea how determined I am, sir. I may contract a deadly disease. I may throw myself under a carriage just to be saved by her sweet kiss. That's a disturbing answer, young lady. And the worst part of it is, I know you speak the truth. There are less dangerous ways, Doctor. Instead of throwing myself under a horse like Emily Davison, I could just throw myself into your arms. <laughs> what is he trying to insinuate? Be careful what you wish for, young lady. I could gaze at you right now and then take you to a shady corner and have my way with you. And leave your carcass to the rats. You... you wouldn't dare. My mother would know. She'd never forgive you. How could she suspect me? Do you know how many vampires are lurking in the city tonight as we speak? Vampires with a worse sense of humor than mine. Oh, my God. For one second, I thought you actually... Excellent, Dr. Reed. Very convincing. <laughs> I scared the hell out of her. <laughs> Alright, I think that's about it, right? Yeah. Goodbye, Charlotte. Give my best regards to your mother when you see her. She's been quite busy these last few nights. I suspect you may see her before me. That's probably true. Alright, I'm gonna meet this uh, guy from Ascalon. And then I'm gonna end the video probably. Downsides. Two. Alright, we're here at the Ascalon Club. Do you know where you are standing right now? In front of the Ascalon Club, I presume. The Ascalon Club only summons or ostracizes. What is your business tonight? I received an invitation. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. Welcome to the Ascalon Club, then, Dr. Reed. Please proceed. Lord Redgrave is waiting on you upstairs. We're in. There has been quite a battle here. Yeah, it looks like the uh, the guard came in. I'm sure the Ascalon Club has the money to replace the furniture. This place looks like it's been wrecked. Let's ask this guy. He Welcome probably knows. to the Ascalon Club, then, Doctor Reed. That's all you got to say. Welcome to the Ascalon. Here's the purpose of the the crown's interest. It's founded in 1837. William Marshall, the first Earl of Pembroke. It's locked. All right, let's just go meet this guy. Enough waiting. A good dagger. I cannot enter. I'm just trying to collect everything before I go talk to this guy. I think that's it though. 
Good evening. We repel the evils for now. Is that Garland? My good friends, if I may have your attention. Behold our visitor, the good Dr. Reed. Newborn of blood so pure and strong that even my friend Fergal Bansher was no match for him. Here, here, here. Come forward, young Ekon, for we have so much to discuss. Welcome to the Ascalon Club, Dr. Reed. I am Lord Redgrave, Earl of Bristol and Chairman of this exclusive association. Lord Redgrave. At last we meet. I have been eager to make your acquaintance. I have heard some astounding things about you. Please accept my condolences for your loss, Dr. Reed. Thank you, my lord. Lady Asprey expressed your wish to meet me. Yes. The lady has always been a useful acquaintance, though not always reliable. Is she a good friend of yours? Yes, she is. I may even say I admire her probity and her kindness. She has helped me since I was reborn. Hmm. The centuries have taught me never to trust a woman completely, especially if she is immortal. Too prone to emotions, if you ask me. Too fickle when it comes to important decisions. My lord, do not expect me to speak ill of Lady Ashbury. Of course not, and I praise your loyalty. Would you offer the same fidelity to the Empire? What do you mean? I speak of the Skull Plague that threatens London and the country. You have been on the front line in the East End, but the time has come to open up a second front here. The epidemic has escaped the quarantine. You have new cases of the outbreak. We don't know for certain, but we cannot allow the disease to threaten the prominent heads of Great Britain. Why have you asked me here? Because the crisis is escalating. Our enemies, the Garda Prewen, have even launched an open hunt. The only way to calm things down is to put an end to the epidemic. You want me to find possible sources of the outbreak in the West End? Is that it? Ah, straight to the point, like all eager newborns. We shall have time to talk about all this, Dr. Reed. But first, I should like to get to know you better. Talk? Is that the only reason you asked me here? Well, no. I also wanted to meet the intriguing Ekon who made such a powerful progeny of his sister. You have not learned the name of your maker, am I correct? No, I haven't. Have no embarrassment, Dr. Reed. We all make mistakes. But whatever your lineage, you are definitely Ascalon material. What do you mean? I would like you to become a member of the Ascalon Club, and to serve me as such. Before I accept, I have so many questions. Please ask. What does it mean to be a member of the Ascalon Club? It means that you swear to protect the interests of the Crown, that you become a loyal servant of the British Empire. Do you have any official recognition from the government? A charter from His Majesty the King? No. Of course, the Ascalon Club publicly supports the Empire, but the true nature of its members remains a secret. Am I supposed to follow orders? As founder and chairman of the club, I alone am entitled to make demands of our members, and I do appreciate obedience. What is the Ascalon Club's express purpose? We follow the credo of William Marshall, the greatest knight who ever lived. As was he, we are sworn to protect the British Empire. What does Ascalon mean? Ascalon was the lance wielded by St. George, glorious patron saint of England when he slew the dragon. And like that lance, we pierce the hearts of all our nation's enemies. <laughs> Were those real figures? And I can't even move the camera. It's like stuck on this sideways point. William Marshall founded the Ascalon Club. Not exactly, 
William Marshall granted me immortality, and I founded the club a few years later. The good knight has been gone for so long. I killed Fergal, who claimed to be one of yours, sent to cleanse the East End of all skulls. Will his death be an issue? Do not worry. My priorities have changed. Fergal was a zealous servant of mine, but like any servant, he had his limitations and is readily replaced if necessary. <laughs> that means I'll be readily replaced when the time comes. I agree to join the club. This is good news. Good news indeed in these crucial times. Let's inform the assembly formally and proceed with your initiation. My initiation? Fear not. Nothing fancy nor dangerous. It is just that we, the members of Ascalon, believe that tradition and custom are the backbone of this country. My fellow members, dear friends, please gather and welcome this Ekon as one of our own. Is he worthy? Is his blood pure? Sure. Well, speak, Dr. Reed, in front of the most sacred blood. The blood of our beloved William Marshall, speak now. Will you serve and protect the crown as he did? Oh, those are flowers, not garlic. <laughs> yes, I will. Then, young Ekon, it is time to testify with your blood. It is time to sign the Book of Allegiance. I know it's awfully gothic and a tad pedantic, but England's traditions are the backbone of our nation. I mean, what happens if I break contract anyway? Or uh, disobey? What's he gonna do? Welcome to the Ascalon Club, Dr. Reed. Take your place among the bearers of the lance. One of us! One of us! Who are these people? Can you even talk to them? This guy. Personally went patrolling last Good evening, night. Dr. Reed. How does it feel to be this evening's centerpiece? Figuratively. A lawyer's Dawson? I feel perfectly fine. Do I have cause for concern? Do not be alarmed. The Ascalon Club has a tried and tested policy for choosing its initiates. May I ask who you are, sir? Why would you be interested? Well, as you seem to be the only man in the room with a beating heart, you draw quite a bit of attention yourself. Ah, vampire senses never cease to fascinate me. They dwarf those of mere mortals. I am Aloysius Dawson, by the way. He's the richer uh, tycoon guy. Are you a member of the club? Yes, I am. And I have been for many years. And will be until the day I die. What can you tell me about it? It's not really my place to give you such information. I am merely a mortal member, and a dying one at that. Are you sick? Personally, I consider my advancing years are a sickness in itself. My body is slowly abandoning me, Dr. Reed. What can you tell me about Lord Redgrave? I would not dare speak of our chairman without his consent. Are you not afraid? You are surrounded by vampires. Sir, it's for that very reason that I joined the club in the first place. I mean, he's dying, he probably wants to be a bit. Is not the nature of this club a secret shared by only a privileged few? My dear Dr. Reed, I have spent years and a fortune precisely to gather that kind of information. 
So you asked for membership? I have been a member of many clubs in many countries. But I must admit, this one is my favorite. Mr. Dawson, of Dawson and Dawson, the wealthiest man in England. It is a pleasure to meet such a prominent figure of London. A withering London figurehead, to be precise. Are you sick, Mr. Dawson? I am a doctor, you know. My case is beyond the scope of traditional medicine. I have spent fortunes on the world's most competent doctors to arrive at that diagnostic conclusion. I'm sorry to hear that, sir. Should I suppose that you're here in search of some form of immortality? Absolutely not. I'm here to implement my plan to save the city I was born in. To cast out the ghastly evil that has us all on our knees. Get out of here. I'm sure he still wants to be immortal. What do you know about the guard of Prewin? I should not say this, but I admire their commitment. This is what the nation needs right now. But they are our enemies. They are not mine, Dr. Reed. Would you help them? No. There is a time for such methods. But brute force will not be enough to fight this plague. We have to think differently. What is the situation like in this part of town? I am sure Lord Redgrave will enlighten you more effectively than I. Money cannot solve every problem. This mysterious epidemic is going to require more than money can buy. You're right. Money is nothing unless one has the will to wield it. I have a plan, sir. A radical one that will save all that is essential in London. What is your plan, then? Quarantine and barricades are futile. What we need is a wall. A formidable, unscalable wall. To isolate the deserving from the infected masses. Haha, <laughs> they tried that recently, that ain't working. By doing so, you would create two separate ghettos. What if the disease gets past the wall? The results would be disastrous. Not if we eliminate all suspected cases of infection as soon as they appear. A necessary sacrifice. Are you not mistaking sacrifice for summary execution? Why do you care? Are you not a vampire? Removed from all mortal concerns? Decisiveness is what the city needs. And it needs it now. He's still a doctor, so what is he talking about? Alright guys, I'm gonna end this video here. And then uh, we'll we're pick it up. A crisis. Next time. I'm shocked no one took the time to clean Thanks for watching. The inside the club since we were attacked.